Welcome to the Tony Gaskin Show, best-selling author, celebrity life coach, and international speaker. The purpose of this show is to bring you motivation, inspiration, and education in the areas of life, love, and business. Thank you for joining me. Now let's get started. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Talks with Tony. Remember, if you have a question, send it in to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Inbox at TonyGaskins.com. If I can share anything with you, I would love to. Now, today's question is, my husband and his female friend. My husband and his female friend, which we've talked about this before here recently, and I'm pretty sure, but everything, you know, kind of have a different angle on it. So this young lady says, hey, I need some advice, and I listen to you all the time on Facebook. I've been married for five years now, been with my husband for 10 years, have two children with him, and two years ago, I found out that he was entertaining another woman. They would talk on the phone all hours of the night texting each other all day, every day. He would talk to her more than he would talk to me. How I found out is I was looking at my phone bill and saw one number on his line. One night, I picked his phone up and saw a text saying, wake up or time for work. I confronted her and he tells me that she's just a friend and that when we were going through our rough patch, he was venting to her. He wanted to fight for our marriage, so he decided to go to counseling and work on our marriage. That was a disaster. He lied in counseling, and all the time he was going to her, he even bought another phone. So on his new phone, they started talking, and fast forward to now, I still believe in my heart and my gut that he's still talking to this woman. I recently found out that He has this other phone, and he keeps telling me that it's his job phone, but he doesn't work for the company anymore. I'm at my breaking point. What is your advice for me? Thank you so much for sending that in. Now, I kind of, you know, I had some pause at the very beginning when you said, you know, been married for five years, but I've been with my husband for 10 years, and that's always a sign to me. It's always a sign to me. The reason being is because I believe that people should get married within three years. Especially, you know, if you're you're adults, you're mature adults, if you're over the age of 25, you you know what you want. You should know what you want and you shouldn't be wasting people's time. And I'm not sure if y'all are over 25, so, you know, when you started dating, so it might not fully apply to you. But I noticed this from coaching couples every day that I see the longer it takes for a man to marry a woman, the worse it is. And the reason being is because it's almost like he has cold feet, like he's really hesitant, like he doesn't know if you're the one. And then finally he's like, you know what, what the heck? Let me just marry her. I, you know, been here this long, been together this long, might as well just marry her. You know, I've been looking around, been kind of cheating on the side, talking to these other women and just haven't met one that was good enough for me to leave her all the way alone. So I'm still dealing with her. So she must be the best one out here. But let me marry her just before she gets, you know, too antsy and starts to really look at me crazy, and I end up losing her because she's tired of waiting. So let me marry her, but I'll just keep doing what I've been doing. I've been cheating this whole time, so I'll just keep on cheating. And if I find a woman who knocks my socks off, hey, the divorce rate is 50% in America, so I'm up out of here. And I'm no different than 50% of other people who got married, so what's the biggie? So that is what I see happen so often in relationships. So here you are, you've been married for five years and you found out two years ago that he was entertaining this other woman. So it's been two years and now, you you know, you're able to write me now two years later and you still feel like he's entertaining this other woman. He was talking to her more than he's talking to you. And the reason why that is, is because 
the way the male mind works, until a man matures, until he matures and he really taps into his purpose and he knows God and he knows his purpose, he knows himself, and he allows himself the opportunity to fall in love with a woman, until a man gets to that point, what happens is he is seeking a thrill and he loves variety. Men, we love variety. We love something new. You know, and that's why you see men who love cars or love watches or love shoes. Almost every man like collects something. You know, it might be guitars. It might be, you know, remote control cars. It might be video games. But almost every man collects something. And we just like variety. We like a lot of things. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what do I collect. I don't think I collect anything really. But I love, you know, I love cars. I don't have the money, you know, to get everything I want. But if I ever get that money, you know, I might try to figure out some type of system or start something to where I can, you know, drive a different car every day. Not necessarily own them and keep them, but, you know, figure something out. And that'll be my little, you know, fix. That'll be my variety because I can't have a variety of women. I'm a married and faithful man. But some men... That's what they like. They like something new. And I'm, I'm going to tell you as a person, and maybe you can feel me on this, but think back to when you were dating. You know, when you were dating, you're dating around, and think back when you went from one relationship to another or when you were meeting different people, meeting new people. It is such a thrill, and it feels so amazing to get to know someone new, to hear their story, to hear, you know, just everything about them. So when a man is talking to a woman, she has a different voice. She tells different jokes. She laughs at different things. So immature men, they still get a lot out of that. They get a kick out of that. So he has this woman and he's with you, but it's almost like after five years you get married. That's kind of like that fallback marriage sometimes. And obviously, and that's not always the case, but the fact that he's cheating, it confirms it. That it's kind of like that fallback marriage, like, ah, let me just do it. But then he actually wasn't really committed. So he's cheating. And it doesn't mean that he wasn't already, you know, emotionally cheating or physically cheating. It's just you caught him. So now you caught him and it seems like he's still talking to this woman and entertaining this woman. And, oh, she's just a friend. But they're talking all time of night, you say. So you just went in like, hey, I love this man. I'm going to trust him. Got two kids together. I'm going to trust him. So I don't know if you go going to bed early because you're tired and he's staying up late watching TV. And then next thing you know, he's on the phone with her. Well, you say he's on the phone with her all time of night and they're texting all day, every day. So they really are building a relationship. And the thing about it is if he can't touch her, like if he can't have sex with her every week or every day, or if she's not that type of woman and you know, she's not going to have sex with him. She might not even know he's married. It could be a possibility that she doesn't know he's married. It sounds like I believe you said you confronted her or maybe you meant you confronted him and he said that she's just a friend. So when you really look at this thing, if you're talking that much, it's more than friends. Doesn't mean they're having sex, but it's more than friends. And one thing about it, when, when you're talking this much, what that means is that a relationship is being formed and they're building on friendship, which is a very firm foundation for a relationship. So they are actually making love. A lot of times we, you know, we call making love sex when you have sex with someone, but that's actually fulfilling lust, you know, or expressing, you know, the lust. And it could also be expressing love once love is is present, but that's fulfilling the lust. Making love is when you are falling in love, when you are communicating and you're talking to one another and you're building as friends, that's making love. This is my definition. I know it might not be anybody else's, but that's what making love really is. And so that is emotional cheating can be more dangerous than physical cheating because when you are emotionally cheating, you really falling for this person because you're giving them your heart and they're giving you their heart. 
And for men, the more a man communicates, the more he expresses himself, the more he falls in love. So you could find yourself in a situation where your man actually is in love with another woman. So in a situation like this, you really have to draw the line in the sand. And you have to say, look, it's her or it's me. Because if this was truly just a platonic friend, then it would be inside of boundaries. Meaning she would just say, hey, friend, how are you? You say, hey, I'm great. How are you? She say, oh, I'm doing great. Just wanted to check on you. Keep your head up. Keep pressing. Boom, in the conversation. But y'all talking for hours and hours and hours? No, that's that's more than, you know, platonic friendship, especially for a married man. Like, it's common sense. A married man cannot be talking to another woman more than he talks to his wife. So this is not just a friend. And because you broke the law, because you stepped out of bounds, you have to terminate this relationship for good. And then he went and got another phone and, you know, sounds very similar to, you know, what, what another young lady wrote in about. So when a man is going to that extent, when he's going to that extent, y'all really need to really sit down, have a real conversation and then get with a professional, you know, get with a professional, a family counselor or a life coach, relationship coach, you know, family counselor or both. Because it's different perspectives. You know, me as a relationship coach, my my perspective is more so from experience and dealing in this all the time and just having a, a understanding of it. But then a family counselor, they're going to have some terminology. They're going to have some, you know, some, some different words for you and different explanations for what's going on. And they, they'll have their own, you know, experiences and uh, teachings that they can share with you, but you all need a third party. You need a mediator because you need somebody that can speak his language to him to help him understand how ridiculous this is. And then you need somebody to speak to you to really help you see what's going on and how bad this can get if you continue to allow it. So hopefully that helps you. And you're able to sit down and come to terms with him and you all can really start to work. For everyone else who's listening who that is not your situation, I want you to think about this. And this is having friends of the opposite sex. It's very dangerous. For me, in my relationship, it's a no-go. I have female colleagues, you know, constituents, clients, whatever you want to call it, but not female friends. Not female friends, because before marriage, any woman that I was a friend with, I was trying to do something with her. And so can't bring that into my marriage. And now I meet women. I meet them in a business setting. Either I'm their life coach, I'm their ghostwriter, I'm their author consultant. You know, I'm something like that. And we're not friends. It's a working relationship and that's it. So we're not talking at 10 p.m. at night. We're not talking at 7 a.m. in the morning. All of our conversations are scheduled. You got to get on my calendar to talk to me. And if you don't uh, get on my calendar, I'm not picking up the phone. If you just call me out the blue, I'm rarely going to be there. Like you, that's what friends do to where you just can pick up and call somebody. No, no, we need it. We need an appointment. And I, I kind of keep it the same way with guys, too, you know, so. For me, it's across the board. The only person that really can call me and I just pick up the phone is, you know, immediate family and my wife. Other than that, we need an appointment. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm tied up. So you have to have boundaries. So if you're going to have, I don't agree with having friends of the opposite sex. Like my, my wife is not having a male friend. And this is what we, you, you have to look at the word friend. Like that's a very strong word. A friend is a confidant. So Anything less is not a friend, it's an associate, it's a constituent, it's a colleague. But my wife is not going to have men texting her phone unless it is a business relationship. So my son's soccer coach texts my wife's phone because my wife is the team manager. But you best believe I'm making sure I'm monitoring those conversations because I know it's a fantasy for, you know, coaches to, you know, get some men with 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 a hot um, team mom or a, or a hot mom of 
one of the players. And I and I know many youth league coaches have done that. Not on my watch. So I'm 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 looking over there. I'm I'm telling my wife, hey, let me see that conversation. What what's what's going on over here? Okay. And it's not anything about, you know, insecurity or anything like that. You have to inspect what you expect. I believe that was Brian Tracy or somebody like that who said that. But you just cannot be lulled to sleep and play the fool. It is okay to just check on these boundaries and to let your partner know, all right, just want to make sure we're clear here. Just want to make sure we're on the same page here and that we understand how we're managing relationships. Because if you don't do that, they're going to do something that you may not agree with and then you're going to be trying to retaliate and now you're fighting fire with fire and you're just going to mess up your relationship. So, hey, think about that thing. Think about that thing, whether you're single or in a relationship, so that you know how you're going to handle the situation. Thank you so much for submitting your question. Hey, I'm just your brother from another mother throwing in my two cents and hoping it doesn't make me go bankrupt. If you have a question for me and you like some unbiased feedback, send it to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon.